The real class income in India is increasing by 12 to 13 percent per year. By the year 2030, you will have about 60 percent of India urbanized. You will find a very large proportion of the population being graduated to middle class. Therefore, there will be a high value demand of the food, food in high value. And then we have to ensure that there is no mismatch of allocation of resources as well as inputs in terms of taking forward the needs to meet the newly emerging society. If science has to serve the society, society is changing and how will it change your science? And therefore, must look at a differentiated, disaggregated approach of reaching those who need your help. We all recognize that by the year, in the, in the immediate past, we never ever received the unprecedented production of food grain of 273 million tons, including 22.5 million tons of horses. But yet, friends still know that one fourth of the world hungry and poor have their homes in India. One fourth of world's hunger. Forty percent of world's under there is children. Our own children. Therefore, if we recognize that this is the degree of unethical, real prevalence of the hunger and poverty still continues, despite surplus production, there is something somewhere to be directed. Do you know that under nutrition is annually costing you about 3 to 4 percent of the national GDP? Do you also know that there is something called epigenetic effect of under nutrition? If the under nutrition gets entrained in your DNA, if you remain stunted, you breed stunted children. If those under nutrition children are stunted, whose share is the highest in this country, we will breed standard children. How can we build Tal India on the soldiers of standard children? These are paradoxes. Please keep this in mind so that we make the child and form the very potential not be an enemy in terms of being seen to be epigenetic subject. I have been a student of genetics. I fact, I will remind you, a very heavy responsibility life. If you also look at the income of a farmer today, this is the farmer or the one who is not a agriculturist, is one is to fifth. If a farmer earns 100 rupees, a non-farmer earns 500. So, we live in two India already. More than 50% of people of India are farmers and their families. Whose income is one fifth of the remaining 50%, and that is India. Bharat and India. Bharat is farmers, India is India, and as you can see, this difference. Can you live in this socio-economically divided, unequal society? You cannot. Therefore, please think of it. What is happening, what has gone wrong? I am not an economist, but common sense tells me. In 1950-51, as a matter of fact, share of agriculture income in the national income was to the tune of 52 percent. Any other party, they all had put in their election manifesto they would like to serve by granting them the minimum produce price of C2 plus 50 percent C2. Many of them defined the C2 in their own ways, but it was never realized in the true spirit. So be the minimum price of the agriculture produced for farm. Have we done it? We must educate them comprehensively. We have not done it. Therefore, I will say, if you have to save and protect along the value chains, the efficiency becomes much more important. The participatory approach, the people-centric approach, 
production is not enough. Production plus 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 has to be there. And if this plus plus plus, you know what it means. One plus one becomes eleven. One plus one plus one becomes hundred eleven. And this is the kind of synergy, congruence, conservation. Con uh, I, I talk about uh, convergence, combination. I think if we can make this happen, only then we can think of an appropriate agricultural research education extension system, not and development. Agricultural research education extension for development, for development, not and development. How you link all this to development is the message. Please don't disaggregate these from development. They are the coherent ways to achieve the development. <laughs>